everybody. How's it going? It's been a while, hasn't it, since I last uploaded a little video. And there's some good reasons for that, and I'm going to share those in this video. But before you watch the rest of this, I would love for you to check out the Trans Pyrenees video that I made for work, along with Micah. It's living on the Lacole Cycling Club channel on YouTube. There's a link to it in the description below. So go and watch that one first. I've made a series of mistakes this year. Mistakes which I know to avoid, but mistakes which have consequences. I'm gonna show you exactly what that is now. It's quite a long story, so here we go. So I mentioned this fatigue, and I guess the first time that I really noticed it was a few days before the beach race. So we're going way back to March now, where in the 36, 48 hours before the race, I had this really weird pain in my abdomen. I'm kind of pointing to it now. It was roughly here somewhere. I genuinely, like excruciating. So on the drive up, I noticed it. And then before the race and during the race, I noticed it. This was accompanied on the drive up by just feeling really hot and sweaty. But I sat in the back of the car for a little while, put it down to that. My race wasn't great. I hate making excuses about poor results. So I just kind of brushed it off as this is what I had on the day. But at the time, I knew that I wasn't feeling 100%. But as I said, it results, excuses, things like this. We can hear people talk the talk all the time, but unless you're delivering it and backing it up with results, it's just empty words. So I just really like to stay clear of making these uh, weak excuses, basically. And I just kind of accept whatever performance I have on the day is what I had. But on this day, I did deep down know that something wasn't quite right. I felt really sweaty, almost feverish, I would say. But I thought, sitting in the car, the back of the car, on my phone, travel sickness, early morning start, maybe even not going to the toilet on the way to the race, you know, little things like that. And you just start to think, well, maybe it will clear, it will get better. It didn't get better, inevitably, when you have health issues, they normally get worse before they get better, don't they? So, travelled to the event, did the event, was not overly impressed with how the event went, travelled home, and then in the, the days after that, the pain was still there. But because cycling's low impact, and I'm not jumping around and doing things outside of cycling, the pain wasn't really an issue. It was just something that I kind of dealt with. I uh, accepted it was there for a while. But then I was hit with this, this huge pang of fatigue. Being eaten by flies, I've chosen the worst place to stop. Hit by this huge pang of fatigue, which would mean that, you know, I'd do work, I'd do a little bit of training, I'd have lunch, and then I'd desperately need a power nap just to finish the rest of the day productively. And one power nap turned to two to sometimes even three just you know five to ten minutes but that was really needed to get through the day and that's not normal like most days i'll try and have a sleep at some point just so i can get into the evenings feeling fresh and ready it's one of those things that i used to do when i was racing come home from training have something to eat have a real quick power nap it just it's really rejuvenating it's almost like a reset button anyway this went on for about 10 days after the beach race so we're into april now and uh micah said this really isn't normal, you should go and have this checked out. So I went to the doctor, it was, uh, I had to convince them that I needed to have an appointment quickly rather than a phone conversation or an appointment in a couple of weeks time. And they took it seriously, they were really good actually. Felt around my abdomen, which was excruciatingly painful when the doctor's prodding you in, in the part of your belly that hurts. And had some blood tests and stool samples. And a couple of weeks passed, uh, tested for celiac disease, which my mum has. A couple of weeks passed and the doctor called me up and said, I'm a little bit concerned. Actually, the words he used were quite scary, but I don't want, <laughs> don't like to make a big thing of things. I like to be, keep things quite modest, I think. But anyway, I'll, I'll tell you the exact words he said. And that was, um, the, the symptoms you're showing are indicative of bowel cancer. So I'd like to have you screened for that at the hospital. So the colonoscopy booked. And it all happened really quickly and i obviously don't have that it, it was i was cleared really quickly but it's an important part of the story because for about two weeks you go you go slightly down that what if direction you realize that the statistics are actually really good it's highly unlikely i was going to have it and deep down i, I didn't believe it but i did stop exercising as much as normal because i wanted to get better i was still exhausted whatever was happening i had really low um red blood cells, really low iron levels. I have inflation in my bloodstream and um, yeah, secreting blood into my stool sample. I haven't addressed any of those issues. I had the all clear from the colonoscopy and it was at that point that I really realized that I, I don't have a lot of time to train for this event in June. So I tried to do something which you should never do and that's make up for lost time. So I 
I tried to race a little bit more than I perhaps was ready to. And then I tried to train a little bit more than I was ready to. And it wasn't really until seven days before the event started that I thought, yeah, I could do this actually. I'm, I'm a, in a good health, good level of health, good level of fitness, I'll be okay. But because I'd fast tracked it, I was already quite, quite tired. Uh, the event was fine, by the way. I felt really good throughout the event and came home. Please go and watch that video because it's been a huge amount of work for the both of us. And, and it's a video that I'm actually really proud of. I think it's really good to have uh, been able to film and document a six day event in a way that I've never done before. Whilst you're not going to see the best camera work, it is still, I hope, telling the story of what happened. And I hope it's an inspiration to people that want to do such an event. So I came back from the event and then I had the Masters National Championships the weekend after where I finished fourth, which is quite, I suppose, pleased with. But again, I didn't feel great. The weekend after that, I did a mountain bike race. Again, similar story. I managed to crash on the first, one of the first corners after seven minutes. Again, didn't feel great. And I just have this, I can't push. There's nothing in there to push with. There's no grunt, there's no power. And it just comes down to, I didn't compensate for having tried to get back to fitness as fast as I did. And it's, it's a big mistake. And that is the mistake you have to avoid. You can absolutely fast track things, but it's temporary. You can get fit quickly, but it's not going to last. And, and that's it, you, you increase your fatigue levels and you need to come back down from those fatigue levels. And ultimately I pushed it a little bit too far and then I've spent the last three or four weeks just absolutely exhausted, which is why I haven't made any videos and why my social media looks really poor because I've just drained. I'm actually going on holiday soon. It's our first real ever family holiday. So we're quite looking forward to that. And that will be a good chance to recharge. And there's some really cool things actually that I want to show you whilst we're away. So we're gonna do that as well. Don't fast track your recovery because you're going to pay for it at some point. What I should have done is just built up slowly, gone to the event with less fitness than I might have liked, and then I could have continued on the back of that event building my fitness throughout July rather than have to play, well, rather than having to compensate throughout the month of July to get better. I'd love to know your thoughts on the Lacole video that we've made. It's again something which the more views it gets, hopefully, the more justification there is for being allowed to do things like that in the future. It's something that I really, really enjoy doing. It's a little bit different to things I've done before, but perhaps it's a gateway to doing more things like that because I really believe that world of cycling is a world of cycling that's accessible to most of us. I think many of us, including myself, as, as I go further down the retirement path, it's harder to reach race fitness. There are too many other things in a week that need to happen, so it's not always that easy to be absolutely race fit when I want to be but you don't need to be race fit to go and do an ultra endurance event it's predominantly mindset as long as your body is in reasonable shape most of it is in the mind and I think it's really interesting and something which I really would like to do more of and I'm really surprised to find myself saying that because I didn't think I ever would I always thought that I enjoyed riding a bike for around 90 minutes to three hours that was my sweet spot but it's really opened my eyes to the fact that if you just pedal all day you get from A to B it's actually really enjoyable There'll be a video on this coming out as well soon because it's quite special. This is very similar to the yellow bike, the Lapier Pulsium that I rode last year. It's had some updates and I'm really enjoying riding it. You'll notice again, it has the off-road tires. That's the bike that I'm going to take to the Gravel Champs in September. Please follow my advice. I hope you found it interesting, insightful, and hopefully you don't make the same mistake I did. If you're going to try and get back to fitness, remember to remind yourself at some point you'll need to compensate for it. Thank you for listening to me waffle. I find uh, making these videos, it's a real hobby, if I'm honest. But as much as that, I just hope that at some point there's information in there that's relatable to at least one person and therefore somebody can learn and benefit from it as well. And it's almost as if I was to live my life again and I was to watch back through these videos at some point, I might pick up on some of these, the things that I'm saying and realise that I can avoid these mistakes just by listening to myself. Obviously that's not going to happen, but it's that train of thought that lives in these videos i'm gonna ride home now try and make my way out of this field it's the only place that i've managed to get out of the wind today but thank you for listening thank you for watching and i'll see you again very soon